And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I want to talk to you today about the new birth. The new birth. Everyone that is hearing me, everyone that is alive, had a physical birth, and we know that. But there is a new birth, and some people call it a second birth. And we are going to be talking about salvation today. If you have a bulletin and want to go along with us, uh, we'd love for you to do that. I have three points I want to share with you today. Number one, you must be a truth seeker. All right? And I really had trouble between true seeker and truth seeker, but the more I thought about it, and, and in my sermon, you'll understand why I said a truth seeker, okay? Folks, people want to know the truth. And we need to tell people the truth. Number two, you must have a second birth. You must have a second birth. And it was puzzling, puzzling in the scripture that we are going to read. But Jesus made it so plain about what the second birth was. And number three, you must believe and receive the word. Folks, for you to be saved, it takes two things, all right? It takes faith. You have to have faith in God, all right? In the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God quickens our hearts of the Word of God. So it's the Word of God that we're going to share with you today, and the Spirit of God, and what He will do towards the end of this service is He will speak to your heart, He'll speak to your heart, and you will know, you will know if that's what you need to do. So let's look at the new birth in John chapter 1. You must be a truth seeker. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And uh, we know uh, as far as a ruler was one of the head teachers. He was well versed in the law, okay? And a lot of times... Uh, they, they stayed in the Old Testament, okay? And you have to understand, when you get down through here and you even see in, in verse 3, this is Jesus' words in the New Testament. And folks, the Old, the Old Testament is important. And the law tells us that we, have, uh, that we are sinners. Folks, I think we all understand that. So when it comes to the Jewish law, he was well-versed, well-educated, probably uh, uh, well, you know, it's for, well off also. And then it says, this man came to Jesus by night. And some people say, well, he was, he was kind of scared to see him in the daytime. But I don't think that's what the deal was at all. Because when you think about Jesus and his life, everywhere he went, crowds went with him. So you couldn't have one-on-one -on -one time. You couldn't have one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. And I thought, and I really think this guy was a truth seeker. And then he kind of explains why he talked to him. And this man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, which is a respectful word, which means a, a student of the Bible, a teacher, okay? Uh, someone that is well-versed. We know, notice the word know, you are a teacher come from God. Okay, so we're, we know this guy is a religious man. And we know this guy is wanting to know truth from, he'll ask Jesus three questions. And when people ask questions, they're wanting to know. And I am telling you, Jesus answers his questions wonderfully. Rabbi, we want to know, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. So he had already heard about Jesus. He had probably followed him around during the daytime. He was curious, but the things that got his attention were the miracles that Jesus did. And you know some of the miracles, folks. He went to up, up to a crippled man and, and told him to walk. And this man, who had not walked in years, got up and walked. He went up to a blind man who had not seen his whole life. And he did it in different ways. And one time he spit in the dirt and he put this in, in his eyes and he told him to go wash and his sight came. So you can see they knew they was different. This, this man wasn't just a teacher. 
He knew that he had something special, and there was something special about this man named Jesus. Verse 3, And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In the book of John, the kingdom of God is used many times. And Jesus is the one that uses it. The quotes are from Jesus. And we understand the kingdom of God is heaven. Okay? Folks, I'm telling you, this life is temporary. Nobody lives here on this earth forever. And there is a life that people cannot see. They physically, physically can't see. And a lot of people want to say, well, you show me. Well, folks, I'm telling you, Jesus was showing this man about the kingdom of God. He was a curious man. He was a seeker of the truth. And in verse 4, and it says, And Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his, mother womb, his mother's womb and be born? So Jesus, not knowingly, threw him a little curveball. They were not on the same plane. Jesus was talking about the spiritual war, world of being born again. He was talking about the future. He was talking about heaven. And this guy named Nicodemus was thinking, now wait a minute, you're confusing me. I was born once. How can I go back to my mother and be born again? And it was making no sense to him. But folks, I am telling you, the world does not understand a man named Jesus. Folks, it was more than a person in the Bible. Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus was born of a virgin. He was not like everyone else. And I even know in our minds we think that is impossible. But the Bible tells us God put the Holy Spirit inside of Mary. Joseph was not. Jesus' is biological father. So this special man was having this conversation with, uh, with Jesus, and he was truly seeking Jesus and wanting to know, how, what makes you tick? What is this all about? Why are people following you? Why do you keep saying something about the kingdom of God? I've never heard these things. And, and the Bible tells us, if hold your finger there and go to Jeremiah Jeremiah 29 with me. Jeremiah 29. When you know at this time Israel was a led captive and uh, Israel in the Old Testament would do things bad and then they would do some things good and it was just like back and forth. And they were in captivity. And, and the prophet Jeremiah was trying to encourage them that listen, you're not going to be in captivity all the time. And folks, we have to understand that the devil is real and he wants to keep us captive, all right? He is real. And so here in chapter, chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. He was saying you won't always be in captivity, but you must Listen to the Word of God. You must believe the Word of God. Folks, we're living in a world where it seems like there is no hope. But folks, I am telling you here and now, our hope is in Jesus Christ. He is the one who saves us. He is the one that can enter our lives. He is the one that showed us how to live for 33 years. Now verse 12, look at this. And then you will call upon me, and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. I hope you know that we serve a God that listens to our prayers. If you are truly seeking God, if you are seeking the truth of God, He hears your prayers. It's never a waste of time to pray. And I am telling you, He is close as the mention of His name. Now look at verse 13. And when you seek me and find me, and when you search for me with all of your heart, you will, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Folks, I am telling, telling you, the heart is the most important part 
of you. The, the most important thing, when that heart stops, your life is over physically. But the heart is where Jesus speaks to you. He is speaking to some of you today. He will speak to some of you. And I tell you, all you have to say is, I hear you, Lord. I hear what you're saying. So we see Nicodemus was a truth seeker. But not only was he a truth seeker, all right? He was also a, a you, truth seeker. You, you must be a truth seeker, but you must always have a second birth. Three times in this scripture, Jesus has used the word born again. Born again three times. And again, Nicodemus was thinking, that can't happen. There's only one birth. Okay? But Jesus literally meant born from above. Born from above. That's what Christianity is. It's not it, I, I mean, we all are physically born, but we have that second birth is when Christ comes into our lives. And Nicodemus wasn't getting it. So what he does is Jesus uses three illustrations down here through Scripture to explain what the second birth in. The first birth, the first one is talking about a natural birth when somebody is born. The second illustration he will use is wind. It is like wind. And the third illustration is the example of the cross. Even as Ryan has sung today, folks, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And I'm telling you, you can accept that sacrificial death. You can accept Jesus Christ in your life today if you will come to Him. Let's look at verse 5. And Jesus answered, most assuredly, and three times you see this phrase, I kind of like the King James here, it says truly, truly, okay, that, which means this is real, this is truth. I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You say, well, some people actually interpret this as being baptized, but we got to see baptism today, and it's such a nice thing to see uh, someone baptized and that water, folks, doesn't save you, all right? You are saved when you ask for forgiveness of your sins and when you invite Jesus to come into your life and be Lord. What he's talking about here again, I believe, is the birth, all right? To be born, to literally be born physically, I'm telling you, the moms, what's the thing that happens that starts the whole process? The water breaks, and once that water breaks, I'm telling you, that baby is coming. All right? And that's what he's saying. And he's still trying to answer Nicodemus' question. How can he be born the second time? And he was just simply saying, no, it's just one time. You are only born once physically. But then he says and uses the word of water and spirit. Folks, that's the Holy Spirit. We know God in the Trinity is the one who created everything. We know Jesus was the Son of God and lived a perfect life and died on the cross for our sins. And not that He just died, but we celebrate Easter. He arose after three days. That's how we know that we're going to heaven. If Jesus arose and He told us in John chapter 14, I will come again and you will be with me forever and ever and ever. So we see the Spirit of God here. And that's what he's talking about. Uh, he cannot enter the kingdom. Look at verse 6. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. I am telling you folks, for 22 years, I was born in the flesh and was in the flesh. I truly did not get saved and invite Jesus into my life till I was 22. Even though I had made a decision when I was 14, I was not serious about it. I said the words, I prayed a prayer, but I knew in my heart of hearts I had not made Jesus Lord of my life. And how do I know that? Because I just lived for myself. It was all about being popular back then in your teenage years and in your college years. It was all about wanting to make money. It was all about girlfriends and sports and, and cars and all that. Even though I said... 
I said a prayer, folks. I'm telling you, I was still living for myself and in the flesh. That's what he's say, saying here. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is the Spirit. Folks, I am telling you, that day, that day I prayed a prayer, I was down front, and I gave my heart and my life to Christ. I knew immediately that God had saved me. There was a peace that just came over my life that I had never had in my life before. And I walked away a changed young man. Now look at verse 8. He talked about the natural birth, but look at this. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Today, I hope you have sensed the Holy Spirit in this room. I've sensed it in the prayers. I have sensed it in the music. I am sensing it in the Word of God, in the reading of the Word. And I am telling you, He is alive and present. And He comes into you at the point of salvation. When you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and it is a part of your being. For instance, if we walked outside and the wind was blowing 30 miles an hour from the south, you do not, you would not walk outside and say, I wonder if the wind's blowing today. You'll know it. You'll know it. Why? Because it's about to blow me over. And see, you don't see the wind. You don't literally see it, but you know it's there. And folks, I am telling you, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, I'm telling you, the wind and the fire of God filled that room for the first time, uh, and the Holy Spirit fell on those place, that place. And Peter preached later, and over 3,000 people were saved. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit. And that's what he is saying. He is saying, no, you won't see it today, but you will sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit may even at the end of the service say, hey, you need to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. I want you to see Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. If you are a born again Christian here today, if you are born and Christian, you, if you have been saved, you were saved by grace. You know what grace is? God's riches at Christ's expense. See, salvation wasn't free. Even though it's a free gift for us, it wasn't free. It cost God His only Son, Jesus Christ. So, for by grace you have been saved uh, uh, through faith. What's faith? It's just trusting in God. It's just believing in God. Folks, I'm telling you we, you, we use trust all the time. All the time we use trust. If you've went out to eat this week or in the last month, you trusted whoever fixed your order, well, it was in order, and that he had his permit, and all these things went well. You didn't see him cook it. You didn't know what kind of day the guy was having, but you sat down and you gobbled up a meal. Folks, that is trust. You are trusting and that same trust is what we put in Jesus Christ, our Lord. For by grace have you been saved through faith and not of ourselves. Folks, we can't save ourselves. See, I tried to clean up. I tried to do better, but I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the Holy Spirit inside of me. I didn't have that spiritual conscience guiding me. All right, so you can't clean up enough. You can't go to church enough. All right, you can't give enough. For by grace have you been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. What is a gift? It's free, folks. It's free. It's a free gift. Uh, 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 of A gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So Jesus is telling them. I am just telling you. He is telling Nicodemus, folks, it's like the wind. Okay? You're not getting it. It's not about the physical birth. We've all been born physically. It's about the spiritual world. 
It's not about figuring out what the wind is doing. That is the Spirit of God. It's a picture of the Spirit of God that quickens your heart and quickens your mind. And then the third thing I want you to see in here, and, and here's, here's what he says, the last thing, verse 9, you must believe and receive the Word. You must believe and receive the Word. And Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Man, Nicodemus was just struggling with the examples Jesus was using. And he's saying, I hear what you're saying, but I still don't get that second birth thing. I don't get it. And he said, are you a teacher of Israel? And do you, you, do you uh, not know these things? He's saying, you know that there was a coming Messiah because the Old Testament even told us that. And you teach other people about the Bible, but yet you still don't get what I'm saying. And what he was truly saying to Nicodemus is, you need to be born again. You need to truly be saved. You need to invite Jesus to come into your life. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witnesses. Folks, Jesus had already preached many sermons. Okay? And they really didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God. They thought He was just a carpenter's son. And He's saying, I've taught you this. I've preached this. And you are not listening to what I'm saying. Verse 12, If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how uh, will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And that was the whole issue with Nicodemus. He was thinking earthly and Jesus is thinking heavenly. And folks, most of us, we don't like to think about death. We don't. And I don't, I'm not saying we should dwell on it. But folks, I'm telling you, you are going to give an account of your life to God. You are going to stand before God. And Jesus was simply saying, listen, Nicodemus, this is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. It's a decision about eternity. And it says, verse 13, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And he's telling him once again, Nicodemus, I am the Son of God. Folks, Jesus is the only one who was in heaven and came down to earth and went back to heaven. Every one of us was born on this earth and we will leave this earth. But folks, God doesn't make us do anything. He gives us a choice. We can either accept Him or we can reject Him. And so Jesus is just simply saying, Nicodemus, think about heavenly things. Think about the future. That's the most important thing we're talking about now. And then he gave his third illustration. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man, uh, Son of Man be lifted up. If you remember in Numbers chapter uh, 21, again, the children of Israel, they were just, you know, they were out there. They were not doing what God asked them to do. Uh, they were uh, marrying Ford and gods. They were not following God and just living for themselves. And he just got... You know, God just said, hey, this this ain't going to work, okay? And folks, I hope you understand God loves you. He loves you, but He must punish sin. He must punish our sin. And, and that's what happened. And you see the Old Testament, all kinds. The plagues was another example of that. But this one He is saying, and the reason He's telling Nicodemus is because it's in the Old Testament. He was saying, Nicodemus, you've read this, but you don't understand this illustration. Those fiery serpents that were stinging everybody was because of sin. There was sin in the camp. And what Moses did, he, he cried out to God on, on the behalf of the people, and God told him, listen, you put, you put a, 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 a deal on a pole, you put these, this emblem, this serpent on a pole, and you raise this pole up. And if the people will look at that and ask for forgiveness of their sins, they will be spared. 
And folks, that's exactly what happened. So what was he telling Nicodemus? Folks, I'm telling you, Jesus has been born. He's already lived here. He went up on a cruel cross. He was crucified for you and I. His blood was shed for you and I. He had the courage and the love enough to say when he was hanging on a cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Jesus was telling Nicodemus, look towards the cross. Look towards the cross. Jesus himself said it in John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth. We spoke about the Word of God being the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So Jesus gave him the third example that day. And folks, I am happy to tell you, Nicodemus, I believe with all my heart, later on, accepted Jesus Christ into his life. You say, Brother Mike, how do you know that? Well, at Jesus' trial, Nicodemus was one of the men that defended Jesus Christ. At Jesus' death, Nicodemus was one of the men that took his body off that cross. Folks, that is forgiveness. That is our Jesus. He told Nicodemus, ye must, not you might, you must be born again. That's what he said. Verse 15, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 is the most memorized, familiar scripture in the word of God. I'm telling you, if I went through here, 80% of you or more could quote that verse. For God so loved the world. Folks, God loves you. Man, he loves you with all his heart. God doesn't want to see you struggle. God doesn't want to see you hurt. But He loved you so much that He gave. He gave. It was a gift. His only begotten Son. Only begotten means there's no more like Him. There has never been. Jesus was special. Jesus was divine. Jesus came from heaven to save you and I. That whosoever believeth the Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Folks, that's why I prayed what I prayed today. Earlier I prayed those three of our wonderful friends. They are in heaven as we speak. They are in the Shekinah glory of God. When they took that last breath here on earth, they took their first breath in heaven. While our hearts are broken, our hearts are broken. See, today, I won't be able to see David Brooks, who sit right up there by Paul Post, come down the aisle at the first of every invitation and get on his knees and pray for our invitation. But you know what? I will see them again. Folks, it's not a hope so salvation. I've asked people, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? And they say, I, I hope so. And my answer is, you are risking all of eternity on I hope so. 1 John 5.13 says, these things are written that you may believe on the Son of God. You can know that you can know. You can know it today if you accept Jesus Christ into your life. And then the last verse, for God not, did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He died for you and I. And it's an individual decision. Your parents aren't going to get you into heaven. Your friends are not going to get you into heaven. Your brother and sister is not going to get you into heaven. They can't pray you in, folks. You have to decide. 
Well, Brother Mike, what do you have? What do I have to do? Very quickly, go to Romans chapter three. I want to share some verses with you as we close. Romans three twenty three. Very simple. I've already said it. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us here is a sinner. Every one of us. I have yet to meet a person that said I've never sinned. I've I have yet to meet that person. Romans five verse eight. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated, demonstrated His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Folks, He went to the cross for you. He died. He went to the cross for you. Romans 6, 23. 6, 23. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. We know what wages is. It's what we earn. Folks, I don't deserve to go to heaven. I do not deserve that. I was a sinner for 22 years. I did nothing for God. And I'm telling you, for the wages of sin is death, and death is being apart from God. It's being apart from God. Folks, there is a heaven, but there's also a hell. Luke chapter 16 speaks of that. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You say today, Brother Mike, how do I do that? How do I do that? Romans 10, verse 9. Romans 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You know what confession is? It's just praying to God. Okay? It's just praying to God. Anyone here can pray to God. He's waiting to hear your vo voice. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Folks, that's the key. Believe. Believe, trust in God. Realize God can do this. God will do this if I just put my faith and my trust in Him. That God has raised Him from the dead. Folks, He is alive. The Bible tells us Jesus is at the right hand of God even as we speak. You will be saved. It don't say you might be saved. You could be saved. He promises you, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Then skip down to verse 13. For whoever, hey, that means all of us, whoever is all-encompassing, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said will be saved. Now he says shall be saved. So all you have to do is call out to God. Would you bow your heads? Would you bow your heads? I'm going to pray a prayer in just a minute. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask the Lord just to speak to our hearts. And if you're here today, and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you've never invited Jesus into your life, I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with me. I'll pray it out loud but you just pray it to yourself. I'll pray it out loud. You pray it to yourself. If you really want to be born again, if you really want to know that when you die, you go to heaven, pray this prayer with me. And not just pray it. Don't just say the words. Believe it with all of your heart. Put your faith and trust in God. We're at the point. This is the time to do it. So if you want to be born again, if you want to uh, see the kingdom of God, if you want to know Jesus Christ, if you want to invite Jesus into your life, pray this prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I'm praying it, but you pray it to yourself, just to yourself. Our Heavenly Father, I need your help. I realize I cannot save myself. God, I need you in my life. God, I know I'm a sinner. I know Christ died for my sins. God, please forgive me of my sins. I was wrong, and I'm sorry. God, I invite you into my life. I need you into my life. I want you in my life. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died and arose. Believe that one day you're coming back. And I am trusting you. All of me, God, I'm in. A hundred percent, I'm in. God, teach me. 
to love you. Teach me to serve you. Teach me to walk with me. you. Teach me your word. God, I want to be a learner. I want to grow in the Lord. God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. God, thank you that you're going to change me. I can't change myself. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Without anyone looking around, without anyone looking around, just me and God, okay? Keep your head bowed if you would. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you just indicate this? I'm not going to come out and I'm not going to, you know, handpick you or say anything to you personally, but I just need to know how to pray for our invitation. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you just slip your hand up where I can see it? Do I see any hands? Anybody said, Brother Mike, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Just hold your hand up. Folks, if you prayed that prayer, I'm telling you what Jesus wants you to do. He wants you to come forward. He wants you to come forward and make a public profession of your faith. To let all these folks know that, hey, I invited Jesus into my life. You say, oh, there's too many people here, folks. I'm just telling you, it's important. The Bible tells us, and Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father which is in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father which is in heaven. If you truly meant what you prayed, when we stand to our feet and you hear that first sound, would you just get up? Would you just come down to the front? We have guys down here. We have ministers down here that can help you with this decision. Father, would you seal it? Would you seal it with the Holy Spirit right now? God, would you give folks courage just to come down? God, we're going to help them. We're going to walk through it with them. God, I just thank you. Thank you for those who have prayed. So God, this is your invitation. This is your time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If you prayed that prayer with me, would you come right now? Don't hesitate. Just come right now.